everybody, it's me, the South Canadian Gamer, and I am in a very plain outfit right now because it is currently 1.14 a.m. Where, uh, where I'm filming, and holy shit, this is going to be an event. Um, uh, before I actually, you know, there will be a game showing up fairly soon, but before we really get started, uh, I will tell you what the hell's actually going on. So, at the moment, uh, I am planning, I'm writing a script, and I'm doing a video for, um, it's kind of a review thing, but basically what it is, is that uh, I will be reviewing almost every single port of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Uh, it's kind of going to be hard to do all of them because Sonic 3 and Knuckles has been ported to a lot of different systems. But uh, I will be looking into uh, the original uh, Sonic Jam, except the problem with Sonic Jam is it's expensive and I don't own a Sega Saturn because that's expensive. And it's like $200 I don't want to spend right now. So... Uh, so Sonic Jam is going to be by all technicalities emulated, uh, but I'm doing the Sonic and Knuckles collection for PC, Sonic Mega Collection, Mega Collection Plus, uh, and I'm doing like the digital downloads, and uh, I'm doing the Wii and the Xbox 360 digital, and the weird one with the Wii is that it's also on the Wii U, so I don't know how that's going to go, uh, and I have the DS one that I'm probably gonna end up like emulating because I have no way to play DS games other than an emulator by recording it it's all weird but basically the idea is it's you know what is the best way to play Sonic 3 and Knuckles if not the original version uh, and I don't I, I recently bought Sonic Mega Collection and Sonic and Knuckles collection and I also got the adventure titles and Shadow the Hedgehog for later things but that's not the point the point here is I haven't even like touched on Mega Collection for GameCube yet so I have to uh, unlock all the games but I figured hey you and you and I will be going through the same pain of unlocking every single game on Sonic Mega Collection for GameCube Trust me, it's way worse on the PS2 version because there's more to unlock. Um, on the GameCube ver or on the GameCube version, there are uh, there are only, I believe, uh, five games to unlock. Whereas on the PS2 version, there are seven. Uh, on the GameCube version, you have to unlock Blue Sphere, Flicky, Rystar. Uh, Knuckles and Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles uh, and then with um, with the PS2 one which I did already because I had it as a kid and I had all the saves on my memory card uh, Blue Sphere, Sonic 2, Knuckles, Sonic 3 and Knuckles Flicky, Rystar uh, and then I believe the comic, zo comic Zone and the Ooze and I can't remember if there were any more uh, although I do know that there's there's one game where you can unlock Vector Man, and I can't remember if that's this one or if that was uh, Sonic Gems Collection. I think it's Gems Collection where you can unlock Vector Man one and two. Uh, but I, you know, that's not what we're doing now. We're doing Mega Collection because Gems Collection I already have all the stuff on for the most part. Um, so any, without, without further ado, I will turn on my GameCube, because it's been off this whole time, and I will push back my PC so I can actually arrange some shit. In fact, you know what? You'll get to see exactly what I'm doing right now. Well, first I'm getting my s fucking Switch box in order here, because it keeps falling back, and then, bam... There. 
now you can see me. And I'm gonna turn my fucking TV down. The problem is, you know, it's nice, it's a TV. It gets loud sometimes, so. It's not much you can do there. But here we are, here's the Sonic Mega Collection. This is how most people play all the classic Sonic games. You know, it's, it's fairly, fairly classic. Uh, I have to make a save file. You can continue without saving, but why would you do that? That's really fucking stupid. I think the only reason you would ever do that is if you were really dumb, which is, you know, if, if you wanted to play with one, two, three, and Knuckles, but separately, or whatever. And now I, th I, have, a, I have, a, have a counter here, because for some stupid reason, they figured that the only way you can unlock these games... Oh my god, my GameCube controller. The only way that you can unlock these games is by, like... Is by playing them a whole bunch. And that's how I unlocked them as a kid, because, like, you know... I'd have to quit the game and then, like, go home... Or go, go you know... Be babysat and then come back home and play more video games or whatever... But, like, now it's pretty much all in one run, and that one run is fucking ridiculous. Uh, I have some delicious water. It's, it's, it's Water Joe, but I don't want to have the label so I don't get sued. Um, but yes, we will indeed make a save on this wonderful uh, game here. So here we are, we got all of our options, we got the, the basic is you can use the analog stick or the d-pad and then B is A, A is B, and X is C. Uh, as for None of these games ever use X, X, Y, or Z, so you don't need any fighter pad controls. If you wanted fighter pad, that'd kind of be hard. Um, but there are many options to choose from. You got your extras. These are things like the manuals, comics. Uh, no, the, actually, the manuals have their own. Fucking, uh, I'm actually in possession of most of these manuals and by most I mean the first four I have I need to get the manual for spinball and the box for spinball uh, mean bean machine and 3d blast are gonna be a little bit more difficult uh, but I have the manual in the box for 2 3 and knuckles and I have just the box for Sonic 1 but I think it's kind of interesting because, and I'll, I'll show you this right now. I think I showed this off uh, in a video I did with with the Gaming Dude 65 once. But you know, whatever. So as you unlock games, you know, for the most part, yeah, there are only two or three uh, extra manuals you can unlock because Sonic 3, Knuckles, Blue Sphere, and um, Sonic 3, Knuckles, Blue Sphere, and uh, Knuckles and Sonic 2 are lock-on games, so they're just the manuals for these four. But uh, if you, like, when you unlock Rystar, Flicky, and... Actually, I think that's it. Rystar, Rystar and Flicky, you get the extra manuals for those two games, which is nice. I was going to say the comic, comic Zone and the Ooze as well, but those are on Mega Collection Plus. And good lord, the only... What's funny is you unlock Comic Zone and the Ooze in the PS2 version by having a save of Sonic Heroes, but why bother getting Sonic Heroes for the PS2? Because it sucks ass. I'm looking up at the TV, and I really need to make a habit of looking towards the camera when I'm saying something, but, like, the TV's up there. I feel like... I feel like if I ever get a webcam, I'll probably end up putting it on the TV. I don't know, whatever. Uh... But we have, I mean, this is what I want to show off. 
Uh, I have the manual for Sonic and Knuckles. And you can zoom in and zoom out. And like, you hear all your page numbers, right? Uh, what's interesting is that in the Sonic 3 manual, they show off Blaster and Techno Squeak from Flying Battery Zone, even though Flying Battery was in Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, but that that's definitely one of those things that say like, hey, you know, just flipping through the pages here, you got all your controls for like, you know, Genesis, and I actually use those controls because I've played it on the Genesis. Uh, but it, it's just funny because like, you know, there, there are all these little like page numbers and you know, lock on things and stories and everything that you'd have in a manual but like sometimes they're a little off because of things that like they did the manual before they released the final game and then they decided to cut something which is exactly why flying battery flying battery doesn't actually make an appearance in the sonic 3 manual but the badniks do so maybe at one point they were intended to be uh in a few of the levels and there are, you know i'll show this off a little bit later this is what i wanted to show off you can tell they just scanned this manual because you'd think this misprint would be like handled but it wasn't but and this is in the original manual i future me put up a video footage of the manual like you holding the manual to this page because i have the manual and a custom made box but that's not the point I have, a, I, have a, I have a real manual for this game, and it still has this, uh, this freaking misprint. It's in another video as well, but I never posted it because it never turned out. Uh, yeah, I'll actually show you the Sonic 3 manual as well. The Sonic 3 one has a color front, whereas the Sonic & Knuckles one doesn't. Whatever. Uh... You know, they show off super moves, which is funny because, yeah, in in the, in the Sonic 3 manual, the actual shields are correct, which is nice. Uh, you got the gumballs, and you got the levels here, and you, as you can see, it's all the levels in the original. Of course, they didn't show off launch base because it's the final one. Uh, and then you have your two-player mode levels, which are nice, and here are the bad nicks. So, you know, you got Rhinobot, Monkey Dude, Bluminator, Caterpillar Jr. Those were in, uh, and they're organized by zone, too. So, it's like, this is interesting. So, you got Rhinobot, Monkey Dude, Bluminator, and Caterpillar Jr. from Angel Island, Turbo Spiker, Buggernaut, Jaws, and Blastoid, Mega Chopper, Point, and Point Dexter from, uh, from Hydrocity, or Hydro City, or however the hell you say it. A Mantis, Tunnelbot, which is the mini boss for some reason. Spiker and uh, Bubbles from uh, from Marble Garden, and then this is where this gets interesting. Uh, Batbot, Clamor, and Blastoid are from Carnival Night, but apparently Blaster must have been planned as well. But Blaster is from uh, Blaster is from. Uh, Uh, is yeah, blasters from Flying Battery, uh, as well as Techno Squeak, and then Flybot Seven Six Seven is from Launch Base, but you don't actually see the Launch Base ones until a little bit later because Penguinator and Star Pointer show up, which are from Ice Cap. So maybe at some point in development, it was intended that Blaster was a part of Carnival Night, or or or. Um, it was just Batbot and Carnival Knight, and then Blaster, Clamor, Blastoid, uh, Flybot, 767, and Techno Squeak were planned for Flying Battery. But then, yeah, you got Penguinator and Star Pointer, Orbanot, Corky, Snail Blaster, and Ribot, which is always fine. Uh, we're not going to look into all these manuals because, you know, it's f they're fucking manuals. Uh, uh, and then you got, you know, you got your extras. These are like comic books and rest in peace Sonic Archie comics because they're finally not no longer a thing they've been a thing for 23 years and now they're not but if you wanted to look at some of the covers of the comics you totally can you know so you can look at the cover of the you know the covers here and these are 
you know, purely for, uh, yeah, these are purely for entertainment, and I'm not going to show them because they're copyrighted. As for the movies, you got, uh, and Sonic CD was actually planned to be in this game, but they moved it to Gems Collection because of, uh, actually, I don't know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, you got the intro and the ending movie for Sonic CD, and I assume the ending movie is uh, the bad ending. Uh, you got a commercial for Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which is really weird, but Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is one of the games that, you know, pairs with this one. Sonic Advance 2, which, holy crap, I still need to finish that one. Um... I haven't gotten all the Chaos Emeralds as all the characters yet, but once I do, I can definitely tell you that that would be an adventure to behold. And then here's like the history of Sonic or something. I've never watched that, and I probably never will. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to go to the games, because, you know, the games are fun. You got Sonic 1 and shit, but I have a save file of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and that saves us so much fucking time. See... This is the first time I've put this game in my GameCube, and you'd be thinking, oh, why does it say I can play Flicky now? Well, because before I did this video, I played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for a little bit, probably up to the first boss, just, you know, to see if it worked, see if there weren't any scratches in the disc that would be detrimental, and it worked. But now it says I can play Flicky because I have a Sonic Adventure 2 Battle save file on my memory card. So... Now it's saving. So now these would be, I believe this one's Blue Sphere, this one is Sonic and uh, Knuckles and Sonic 2, and then this one is Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast, Spinball, Mean Bean Machine. This one's Flicky, and this one is Rystar. So, um, you know, you got a very, very widespread of games here. So you, you can, you know, you can play Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 the way they were originally intended, and that's probably the two games you'll be playing the most, because playing these two games separately feels weird. And when I was a kid, they didn't feel too weird to me, because they were, uh, they were the original games. You know, this is the way that you play them if they're separated, which is fine, but, like, after playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles the way it was intended to be played, it feels really, really weird playing them separate again. Uh, and it also feels really bad because you know that that's like, that's... Well, because there's the bad ending, the good ending, and the best ending. And you feel kind of bad because the good ending isn't necessarily good. You know, but that's all you get if you play either of these separate. So the best ending is way better. So... Today we are going to be uncovering these four uh, game slots here because we have to. And we'll be playing these four, actually we'll be playing all of these except for Mean Bean Machine because now that we have Flicky we don't have to play Mean Bean Machine at all, which is great. Uh, But at some point, we're going to have to play this one 30 times and these three 30 times. And that's going to be when it really, really goes to shit. And I will probably end up playing some sort of music in the background. Likely the Sonic 3 soundtrack. Just because, why not? It's a good soundtrack. And uh, at that point, you know... At, at the point we're at right now, you know, listening to the music is great and whatnot, but once I start really getting into unlocking the games, I'm probably going to turn the audio down. In fact, I'm just going to do it right now. There we go. Shit, I just realized something. I don't even have to turn off the audio here because uh, I have it at the moment to go through analog because I recorded PC a whole bunch so whoops well I'll just put in the soundtrack when I'm doing everything anyway
because it's not going through HD. Whatever. Um, I'll just play a soundtrack in the background because that's probably what's going to end up happening. Anyway, we will uh, we will start with Sonic the Hedgehog playing that 20 times. And it'll record the game log. And thankfully the GameCube is so much faster than, uh, than the PS2. Which is awesome. And I really wish I would be able to play music right now, but it will bleed through my microphone. And Lord knows that's not good for copyright reasons. And it'll also give me nothing to talk about. Uh, and I should mention that if you want to go to the game menu, you have to press Z because pressing start just starts the game. So I'm, every time it says recording game log, I'm pressing the button up on the counter. This is... Most likely, I am going to speed a bunch of this up because this is really boring. <laughs> oh my god, this is absolutely the most boring thing I've ever had to do in my life. Just to play some games, really. Like, I completely understand, like... Well, and I think the cool thing is that when you start the game up, it records the game log, where in the PS2 version, it records it when you leave the game, which is really weird, uh, but... I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is... This is really bad. Like... I, I, I think the, the moral of this story is, like, you know... Make your games unlockable if need be, but don't make them unlockable like this. Because now you're just begging for someone to buy a GameCube action replay. And that's not fun. Like, there are some things that, like, I cheat because I don't have time. Or because I've already had the pleasure of beating the whole game. I'm probably not counting this correctly at all. But the next one we'll be doing is Sonic 3D Blast. Because that's how we know that we did it right. Because if I did do this right, then if we do Sonic 3D Blast the right way, then we'll know because it'll say that we can now play Blue Sphere. Is God oh so fun to play if you have the time to which I, I really don't and I think the worst part is this is 1 a.m. I'm sure by the time I finish this video it'll be like 3 or 4 because it always is I really don't have a lot to talk about right now, and that's not a good thing. There's a part of me that could be doing this so much faster, but the problem is, like, my muscle memory really wants me to play the fucking game, but that's not what I'm doing. Um... I suppose I can mention about Sonic 3 and Knuckles, because that's the whole fucking reason of doing this. Uh, so... During this whole video, uh, yeah, I'm going to be showing different versions of Sonic and Knuckles, and mentioning the, the music in Sonic and Knuckles collection, uh, mentioning... Uh, easy mode in Sonic Jam, mentioning Sonic 3 Complete, that fucking amazing ROM hack that someone did. Uh, and I'm, I'm especially going to be mentioning that the, you know, 
pretty much Sonic 3 complete. It's not the best thing we have. Uh, and I'm waiting to do that video until I have a proper um, method of playing the fucking game. Because I recently bought a Mayflash Genesis uh, controller adapter for the PC. Because when Sonic Mania comes out, I want it to. I want to play the game with the Genesis controller. Because fucking like the the deep like I I could play it with the fucking analog stick. In fact, that's the way I've played a lot of the Sonic games. Uh, in fact, I mainly played Sonic One and Two on with an analog stick on the PS2 even. So it was really kind of hard to keep your finger on if you had just eaten like a fucking whole bag of pirate's booty. But, um, you know, as I've, as I've matured, I've learned, hey, play it on the original console because that's the way you are meant to play it. But I have a Genesis controller that works and I have a Genesis, you know, whatever. But Mania isn't coming out for the Genesis because it's not a Genesis game. It's a fucking... Uh, PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch game. And I would have loved to get it on the Nintendo Switch, but fuck, why would I ever get a Nintendo Switch? And I almost got it on the Xbox One, but then I decided, hey, Xbox One doesn't have, um, Xbox One doesn't have a lot of other games that I want. All Xbox One has is fucking Mania, and Mania is released on other things. So I decided, hey, let's get it on the PC instead, because I can beef up my PC whenever. So now I'm getting, I, I pre-ordered Mania on the PC, and I'm uh, in the process of pre-ordering the soundtrack on vinyl, which is always great. Uh... But I have an Xbox controller, and I could use the analog stick or the D-pad, but the D-pad sucks, and the analog stick just doesn't feel right to me. So I plan on getting this Genesis adapter, and I plan on uh, and then I plan on. Uh, playing Mania all the way through with the Genesis controller and I hope that really works because I don't want to use the Xbox controller I mean that's a good second option it's a decent controller and it works but I want to use the Genesis controller just because hey it's a classic fucking Sonic game I played 1, 2, 3 Knuckles with the Genesis controller I intend to play Mania with the Genesis controller so, but uh, when I play complete, I'm going to be showing it, I'll, I'll be showing gameplay with the Genesis controller because it just works better, honestly. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show how difficult it is to control with the keyboard. In fact, when I used to play ROM hacks all the fucking time, because when I was a kid, all I had was a PS2 and a Wii, and I had a computer, and I was like, hey, there are all these different ways that you can play video games on the computer, because computers are getting fucking powerful, right? So, I, uh... Alright, that should be number 20 for the for Sonic 1. The, yeah, there was, um... Back when I was a kid, I used to go onto YouTube and I watched Sonic Man Zero's Let's Plays of Sonic 2 long version. And that one was fun because he only played the, the missing levels. So he would play Wood Zone and um, Hidden Palace, Genocide City, 
but he basically, yeah, I watched Sonic Man Zero basically, and Sonic Man Zero is not a thing anymore. So, you know, there's that. Shout out to Sonic Man Zero if you're out there. I don't know, whatever. You know, a lot of things have changed since 2006. Um, but yeah, I I would watch like Sonic Man Zero, and he would play uh, he would play Sonic Lost Levels or whatever, and then I would watch. Uh, who else did I watch? I watched. Uh, the Sonic Paradox cartoons or the Sonic Paradox animations or whatever and that was really funny I watched um, the hell did I watch there was um, Ashura the Hedgehog I didn't know what Ashura even was I didn't know it was a glitch in Sonic 2 until like way after Ashura was introduced to me uh, but it was basically this kid was Ashura and he hung out with his fucking recolor OC friends. Which I think the Halloween one was my favorite because they made a reference to Monster House and they had uh, Robotnik's legs with Peter Griffin's body. I think that was, that was the height of that video. Uh, but there was also... Um, the Sonic Oddball show, um, or Sonic Oddball, it was with like Mario and Wario and shit, and uh, there was the Sonic show by Garage Man 1989, which is still up, I think, which is great because I actually now that I mentioned that I want to rewatch that after this, uh, which that ended. Um, but there was <sighs> some someone did a bunch of Sonic animations. I know the seventh one was Halloween, and that was based off a of Tails doll. Uh, but basically, it was just little like shorts or whatever, and it was made by this one kid. And of course, that you know, Shadow was edgy, and Sonic was fucking stupid. Knuckles was lazy, whatever. Um, I'm sure I could find it if I really wanted to. But there was one game that I remember seeing, and it was a real game that I had downloaded at one point. But then we sold our computer, and I don't, have, I couldn't find it anymore after that. Uh, but it was an Assure the Hedgehog game, and the whole idea was that you couldn't spin dash because Ashura was made in the lab or something. But he had a, a snowboard, so the whole the whole game was ice cap zone, but Ashura, and the whole game was on that snowboard or whatever, and it, it was actually pretty good. But um, I remember seeing that all I remember from I remember playing that game, but all I remember from actually like. from actually like seeing videos of it was uh, the final boss was Dark Supersonic. If anybody has this game in their possession or knows what I'm talking about and can link me to it, like that'd be great because that's a part of my childhood that I would like to, to have return. Uh, but I would watch uh, Cybershell 13. Well, it's now it's just Cybershell, but Back, it used to be Cybershell 13, and that was a big part of me, because that's how I learned words like fuck, shit, and faggot, which uh, I don't use a lot. I use fucking, and I use shit, and I use ass a lot, because I learned ass from the nerd. Um, but, you know. And of course, there was cooking with Cybershell, which was funny. Uh, and I, I, at some point I learned about Some Call Me Johnny and uh, Brain Scratch commentaries um, and I think I learned a little bit about 
I, I, I watched Chugga Conroy before them, though. Admittedly, I, actually, I caught Chugga Conroy in the middle of his Paper Mario 2 Let's Play, but I only watched him for Paper Mario 1 because I was also a really big Mario fan. So I was like, hey, fucking, you know, whatever. I watched Smosh, Ed's World. Uh, fucking... Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of things that I watched on YouTube. I watched uh, Moby and Angels, uh, glitches with Sonic, and like the the plushy videos that they did at one point. Um, else did I watch? I watched a lot of different like things back in 06. I didn't learn about the... Uh, the first thing that introduced me to YouTube was Ed's World, because uh, we had some exchange students from like Canada or something that stayed over at our house and they were like, oh, have you seen Ed's World? And I was like, no. I was like, oh, you gotta watch Ed's World. So we watched it. I wanted to play Sonic, because... That was what we did back then. Because the only games that I had for my PS2 were like Cars, which no one wanted to play, and uh, fucking this fucking Sonic Mega Collection Plus. I got Heroes as well. I rented Heroes, and then eventually I bought the full actual game. I had a slim PS2. I have a fat one now, just because it works with my uh, it works with my setup. Because I have a PS1 as well, so I have to put that on top. But you know, the the the, the fat PS2 is just the same thing, just bigger. Um, there's one thing I remember when I was a kid, and is the fucking how fucking much this Tails doll scared me. Now I think he's fucking the greatest thing on earth. Fucking, I actually have a Tails doll plush. Future me put up a picture of that. Um, it's custom made, soft as all hell, man. It's, it's just wonderful. Uh, I own Paper Mario 1 through 4. I don't own Color Splash yet, but I am happy to say that I've played a little bit of Color Splash. Uh, I've since gotten past my Brawl obsession and moved on to Smash 4. I haven't played Brawl in like a year. I played Brawl once last year because uh, I wanted to relive the memories of playing um, playing as Sonic in Brawl, but Jesus Christ, that's hard to do. I uh, recently rebought a DS Lite just to play New Super Mario Brothers, but cheat. You know, because that's what you did as a kid. You cheated at video games because you sucked at them. Uh, but one of the things I remember from my childhood, besides being scared by the, uh, the Tails doll and the Sonic Paradox team animations, was... Uh, there was one segment, and it was making your own uh, Sonic fan character. And being an artist myself, I'm a musician and I'm a writer. And uh, one of the funniest things is that, like, they they mention like, you know. Take some official Sonic art. Oh, sweet. Now I can play Blue Sphere. Fuck yeah. Uh, one of the things they mentioned was, like, find some random dude on DeviantArt and request them to draw your character. And, like, as a writer, it's really hard to take requests because, like, you know, I want to make these videos. I don't want to fucking, like... Yeah, I don't want to fucking deal with this shit. Now we're going for Knuckles and Sonic 2. 
um, by the way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but like, you know, as a writer, it's really hard to take requests because it's like, holy shit, what? You know, I can't write a two-page story in like a day. Or like, you know, I, I'm more like an art trade or a commission guy because like paying for commissions isn't hard now that I have a job and art trades are easy because like you have to take time to write your side or draw your side or whatever and the other person has to take their time too so it's like you're both in the same boat of you know hey we need to take our time and by the time you're both done you're both done so you guys can you know trade artwork and whatnot which is always always fine uh, but like I just find it funny because uh, <laughs> sonic recolors are still a thing and it's horrible because like I know a few people that have Sonic OCs and they're really wonderfully developed and I love them but I also know a few people that have uh, Sonic OCs that are literally just Sonic but but red or like blue or something or Sonic is blue whatever a different shade of blue with like a different tail and now they're like a like a combo species or something and I just find that really funny because it's like dude I'm cool with you having this as like a start but you've had this character for like five years five maybe is an over exaggeration but you get the point it's like they've had this character for a while you need to grow out of that even when I made my Sonic OC put that up on the screen uh I, uh, I at least had the decency to make it more of an original design, even though I made it, I, the first design I think I made in, uh, yeah, the first design I made in, um, 2013, holy crap, that was a while ago. That is four years ago already. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, I made uh, Sonic OC back in 2013. Probably around late May. I was in middle school. And as I ma when I made this OC, I just used my real name, which we probably all know by now. Whatever. Uh, you get the point. It was my name, and I made myself a cat because I liked cats. Now I connect with them more because I'm a lazy fuck, but that's not the point. Uh, I uh, I made my OC back in 2013, probably around late May, early June, or whatever, and I made it in uh, some OC creator. It wasn't the one on like new grounds and like addicting games. It was the one on DeviantArt. I can't remember who the artist was, but like I remember it was by all technicalities it was like furry doll maker or something, which is always always confusing because it's like furries and Sonic OCs are in the same group but technically different subgroups. Whatever. I don't give a shit. If you want to classify yourself as a furry, that's fine. If you deny it, you're still a furry. Fuck you. Um, but, like... Yeah, I, I made a Sonic OC. And I had, like, short hair and, like, a red shirt. Because those were some of the default options. Like, red tennis shoes. And then I decided, hey... I want to grow my hair out, so I, I, uh, I gave my OC longer hair, and in fact, I deleted them. But they used to be on the on my YouTube channel's Google Plus page because 
uh, you could post things to Google Plus and basically let people know, hey, you know, y you have um, you have means of promoting your stuff, and I was stupid, and I decided, hey, let's show my let's show my character, blah blah blah. It was really bad, and I deleted that because I'm ahead of that now. Uh, but basically I got someone to redraw it and it looked good and eventually uh, someone re-redrew re it and it kind of was like the cleanest version of this version of the character that I had and it looked nice I renamed it so it wasn't my name it was like PB or something named after a Paul Paul Benjamin and I think now it's, re it's first name Paul because of Paul McCartney and middle second or middle name is Benjamin because of it's all about the Benjamins something shitty like that I don't know I, I'm a, I'm a musician God damn it I, I enjoy to make my characters somehow music related um, But one of the ideas is like I have a character named Diana based off of Michael Jackson's Dirty Diana. I have a character named Pandora based off of the music service. You know, shit like that. But like, I just find it funny because here I am with like with this horrible, horrible character, and eventually I'm like, you know, I should probably redesign this. So I decided, hey, let's get a redesign, and I eventually redesigned it to what you just saw. I will post a progression, because I'm pretty sure I still have the image files of this character on my hard drive. I don't even know if I deleted them, if I didn't, good for me. I still have evidence that I was a cuck. Fucking... God, this is the most boring thing. Like, pretty much I'm talking about my life because fucking anything is better than this. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna sit up. It's fucking hot in here. Oh, man. You get to see the full fucking title screen. Look at that. We're actually not playing it, though. There was... Once a time in my... Ooh, Jesus Christ. There was a time in my life where... And, like, this is the earliest I remember. I think I was, like, five. Like, you know, you know how you forget shit when you're when you're older because like you know you're older your brain is shed itself and shit but like there's shit I subconsciously remember but then there's shit that I like I know I remember and that's fucking assure the hedgehog game was definitely one that I remembered Fucking neck is stiff. You know you've been playing video games. Like, I've been playing Sonic Adventure all night. I played Sonic Adventure from the moment I woke up at 1 a.m. Not 1 a.m. 1 p.m. To now. Except, you know, not now because it's been a half an hour since I've started this video. Uh, but I've pretty much... I played Sonic Adventure from... For 12 hours, pretty much. Minus two, because I had to go places and eat food. Uh, Alright, going on to Sonic Spinball now. I think. Yeah, going on to Spinball. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I'd been playing Sonic Adventure because I wanted to get... Uh, all the Game Gear games 
that you could unlock via um, via getting like emblems and doing missions and crap. But the problem is that's really hard. <laughs> I think the games run a little bit better on the GameCube. There are a few games that I think you can play on uh, on the Gems. I think, from what I remember, Gems Collection and Mega Collection have all the games. If not, then it's Gems Collection and Mega Collection Plus, because... Uh, I think a few of them you have to unlock. Because you can play uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 game here on both DX and Gems Collection, whereas you can only play. Um, you can only play uh, the first Game Gear 1, or first Game Gear Sonic the Hedgehog on uh, the PS2 one or DX, which is fine, but at this point I'm honestly thinking of getting a Game Shark or like an action replay or something, because I really want to play, I've, I've, I've already beaten Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, in fact I beat Sonic Adventure twice just because I thought it would be relatively simple to get all the emblems. It is not. It is really not. And that is not something I want to deal with right now. Because I still have to do reviews and shit. And summer is more than halfway over at this point. And I don't want to waste my summer playing Sonic Adventure if I know that all I'm going to get is a bunch of Game Gear games that I can already play. So I'm just going to use Game Shark to get both Green Hill Zone and Adventure 2 and um, and all the Game Gear games in Sonic Adventure 1 and I'm probably also going to use it just to get all the fucking Chaos Emeralds and Heroes because I've done that already on the PS2 version uh, I deleted that file though because I was stupid I think there's one other game I want to cheat at too, just because fucking why. But that is an advice. Fucking what game did I want to cheat at? Because I know there's one that one game that I absolutely like had to use a cheat code for or something. Could have been. Uh, I can't remember. It was probably... It was probably some game that I can't remember. Yeah, anyway. Um, fucking... Jesus. Uh, but yeah... Green Hill Zone in Adventure 2 is really the only reason I'm buying a Game Shark for the GameCube. But, uh. And, you know, you might be thinking, hey, if you're buying a Game Shark for the GameCube, why are you doing this? Because, you know, that's it's a waste of my time. First off, it's a waste of your time. How are you at this point in the video right now? Um. Second, it, it is a waste of my time. But it's a waste of time to tell you things that I wanted to say, you know, either I didn't say, I've said it in a bunch of other videos that you probably haven't seen, or they were just really old and not really that well done. So I feel like, hey, why not get everything off my chest at once, uh, and maybe at the end we'll play a little bit of uh, Blue Sphere or some, just because why the hell not, it's a fun fucking game. Uh, but, yeah, so there's that. Uh, what the hell am I thinking of right now? 
uh, cheating at GameCube games. What do I want to work off of that with? Uh, oh, it's cheating at Brawl. It's cheating at Brawl because I, I there was at one point in my life where I was like, man, you know, do I just want to use a Game Shark to unlock all the stages in Melee? And then I unlocked all the stages in Melee because I got good. I unlocked all the stages in Melee because fucking I'm good as shit. And in fact, you can actually see the video. Uh, I'm going to link it in the description. You can actually see the video of my friend Ben uh, getting Final Destination for me. And it's funny because literally on that same day, my friend Lucas was like, hey, could you help me unlock Final Destination? And I was like, no, because I'm going to be busy later today, and I also need to, I'm also going to be hanging out with Ben, and he was like, oh, okay. And so then we recorded the video of us unlocking fucking uh, Final Destination in Melee, playing a little bit of Melee, and then playing Brawl. But we played... We played Melee up until we unlocked uh, Final Destination and a little bit after, just because Melee was super broken. And then uh, we played Brawl, and what's funny is that we unlocked Me uh, we unlocked Final Destination at like 4 p.m., so like right after school, pretty much. My glasses are breaking, I think. Yep, they are. Awesome. Holy crap. All right, whatever, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we unlocked Melee at like 4 p.m. And my friend Lucas unlocked uh, Final Destination at about 7. So, by all technicalities, we did it first. <laughs> and uh, that was fun because it's like, hey, we did this thing before you did. But we're friends, so it's cool. But... Um, yeah, at one point I was planning on thinking of using a Game Shark because I wasn't that great at Melee, but then I realized, hey, the only way to really get good at Melee is to play it a whole bunch. So, I'm still not good at Melee. Melee is super fucking broken. I play Ness, and Ness is considered to be one of the worst characters in Melee. So, <laughs> if you really think about it, probably not going to be getting good at melee because the only characters I could ever use are Mario and Luigi and there are other way better characters I think Ganondorf is up there Kirby I don't know but like yeah whatever I may have not got I may not have gotten all of the uh, all of the passes for Sonic 2 because that would have been past 20 earlier today. By earlier, I mean like a minute ago. I don't know, maybe it'll give us some... Nope, yeah, but I, gotta, I definitely got to do Sonic 2 a little bit more. See, this is what I hate about it, because, like, you can use your counter, but, like, sometimes you'll miss, and I guarantee I will use the counter. I, In fact, you know, I... I'm not going to deal with it right now because it's literally just me talking and shit. And the only thing I'm editing into it is uh, music. So there's that. But like, I just find it stupid because it's like, I'm sure I could have put in a counter for this. But like, guaranteed if I had used a counter, it would have taken so way longer to edit. And I'm going to have to rewatch this whole video later just because um, I, I told myself to put shit in. I remember when I was 10, I wasn't always a console collector. In fact, I wanted to be like my uncles and the, va and the angry video game nerd. You know, because when you're a fucking when you're a fucking kid you aspire to be someone who's older than you 
And guess who's older than me? Uh, the fucking nerd. But mainly I wanted to be like my uncles because my uncle Dan had a whole bunch of video game systems. Mainly, mainly Sony. He had a Wii and a, I think a DS, but he only played Sudoku on that. So I was like, you know, why bother? You know, why bother having it anymore? And he only played Sudoku for like a week or two and then he put it away and started playing other games like Katamari again. Uh, but... Um... Initially, uh, I wanted to... Hey, now I can play Knuckles and Sonic 2. Awesome. So now we gotta move on to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Because the only possible way we can unlock Rystar, which is the last one, is to unlock Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and then fucking play it a whole bunch. Which is going to suck. Uh, but, f yep, Sonic 3... Uh, yeah, so I basically wanted to be like my uncles and have a whole bunch of video game systems, uh, especially my uncle Russ, because he had a whole bunch of extra shit. Oh yeah, you need to click save and exit this time because they're actually save files. So, you have to save your saves. I don't know. It's an extra step I have to take, really? Whatever. Jesus. Like, I know there are save files in Sonic 3, but could you just actually, like, auto-save them? Or, like, only remind me once because the only way to exit is hitting save and exit? <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Yeah, basically, I just wanted to be... Uh, like a collector because it's cool it's like there are so many different game systems that, gay, gay systems there's so many different game systems out there that it's like dude you know why not have them all and now I'm at the point where it's like okay I want to get these game systems but not because I want to have them but because they have games that I can't get on PC. And that's kind of where I stand with some games. But like, I, I, I think the farthest I'm going to go for collecting right now is up to 7th gen. Like we... Wii game or Wii Xbox 360 and uh, PS3. I have a Wii U, but for the only reason that like I'm Nintendo loyal and I probably want to get a Switch as well, but not really. But uh, I have a PlayStation One and a PlayStation Two, and I've yet to get a PS3. Uh, and then. I want to get an, uh, the original Xbox, just for shits and giggles. I probably won't even play it, I'll probably just have it. Uh, but I also want to get the Nintendo 64, because that's the only other video game system I have to collect yet. Because I have an NES, I have a SNES, and I have the GameCube. I think the only other one I would have to get is the Virtual Boy. There is a Virtual Boy at the game shop that I stop at for things like the, you know, GameCube cables and games and shit. In fact, I stopped there fairly recently to get Sonic Unleashed for Wii. Um, whatever. I gotta sit up again because my fucking posture is horrible. And I can't fucking do this the whole time. Whew. Oh my god. So. Back when I was 10. Going back to. 
collecting consoles again. Or actually, this is good. Like, my first official console was the PS2. And... I feel like... If I... Why am I playing a game? <laughs> Had I been... Oh, the... Well... Maybe... Maybe it was because of the controller. Basically, when I was... When I was, like... Five, my parents were like, we need, because we, we had a DVD player, and it broke, and I think my uncle was like, I, I, I don't know, I can't remember the whole story, but basically I think there was some sort of story that like, we needed a DVD player, and someone, or something clicked, someone, someone decided to say, hey, why don't you get a, a PlayStation 2, because they play video. And or, or maybe they just bought it because why not or something I need to get uh, PlayStation 2 remote just because why not I <laughs> there, there are two things that I want to get for my PlayStation 2 or three three things in total that I want to get for my PS2 a Logitech wireless controller with the receiver a um, a PS2 remote and a um, a multi tap and in fact including that consider I'm get, I'm working a whole bunch this week so I gotta I'm gonna get paid a whole lot I'm pretty sure that that'll likely result in uh, quite a lot of dough so I could probably end up getting all three of them. Uh, but yeah, we actually we had another controller as well. It was a third party and it had white buttons and it was really bulky and it was a turbo controller I think too as well but that one broke we had an official one I think we got the Logitech one just because it was super cheap because it was a third party but that's one of the third party controllers that's really expensive now because it worked like, Jesus Christ, Logitech knew what the hell they were doing. And I honestly wished I could have kept the Logitech controller, but unfortunately, we sold it to GameStop because our PS2 eventually broke. Because eventually we had a Wii, and I had a DS, so... Starting my game collection, I had the PS2. And I had the PS2 when I was five because it was also a DVD player, and I had the slim PS2 because it was new and it did stuff better or something. I can't remember. But we bought a few games, and I got Sonic Mega Collection because uh, for some reason it was just better, and that's how I started becoming strange. Uh, and then. When I was uh, when I was eight, the Wii came out, and everybody wanted a Wii because it was a Wii. And I've had my Wii, uh, or the Wii came out in 06, and everyone was like, "Oh, sweet, a Wii!" And then there was a huge Wii shortage. And at one point, I saw an ad on the internet for a free Wii. And we didn't know what spam was, but we never got a free Wii. Uh, eventually, we just end up buying one. 
Uh, I think it was for Christmas too, because we bought we play in an extra Wii remote because back in the day they sold Wii Play with a Wii remote, and I'm sure if I were to buy it this time, it would just be the disc. But uh, there's a part of me that wants to get it with the Wii remote because I don't have a fourth one yet. And there has always been a, there, there have always been days and in my childhood and now even today where I was like, hey, I need a fucking fourth Wii remote. Why don't I buy one? <sighs> like initially, we got uh, my first Wii remote was the one that came with the console. My second Wiimote was the one that came with Wii Play. I've had those both since 2008. And I had... Uh, and I, my third one, I believe I got separately because uh, I would always have, we would always have friends come over, and it was either both of my friends, Wilson and Chris, or it was two friends, it was like Austin and Chris, or I would always have at least two friends over sometimes, or maybe it was uh, my friends from Waukesha, Xander and his sister, and we would play together. And I didn't have enough controllers for the Wii, so I just bought a third one because, hey, we have three people playing the Wii at one time. And now that I have more friends, well, now you can see why it's hard to play Wii games. But a lot of the times we're playing Brawl or something on the Wii U, or it's just two of us. And I feel like for the PS2, I think I only need the multi-tab for Ribbit King or for Twisted Metal. Uh, whereas uh, for the I have four controllers for the GameCube, so I can play Smash with the GameCube controller. But for like Mario Kart, which I can also play with the GameCube controller, for Mario Kart 8, I could play it. You know, actually, no, I don't need four controllers. In fact, the only reason I think I'd ever need four controllers is as if it's, uh, as if I was playing Wii Bowling with four people, and that's it. And I don't usually have that problem because I'm not usually playing four-player Wii Bowling at my house. And guaranteed, if I did have the event where four people were at my house, I know for a fact one of them has a Wii remote that they can bring. So whatever. Holy crap, my neck is fucking kinking and it's hard to talk. Oh my god, it's absolutely hard to talk when your neck keeps kinking. We're going on to Sonic and Knuckles. Holy crap. Okay, so... Yeah, there's a, there's always been an instance in which I needed a fourth Wii remote, and now I don't need one. Now that I realize most of the games that I've been playing, you know, whatever... But I got my Wii back in 2008 because that's when the Wii shortage starting started to come to a close. But I got a DS before that. I got a DS in 06. Because how much fun is it to play games on the go? Really fun. Because playing video games on the go is the greatest thing ever. In fact, my first video game was Sonic Rush Adventure. On the DS. Uh, my first actual video game was GoldenEye. <laughs> really, right? It's funny. I was four years old and we were at a church get-together at... Uh, at the duels and originally uh, you know I would play worms when I was like five and all I would do is blow myself up because I was horrible at video games but like
I didn't play Worms first. I played... I watched people play Worms, and that was fun because, you know, as a psychotic little kid, who doesn't like explosions, right? I mean, whatever, man. Explosions! But, like... As a... As a... As a... There was once a time, you know... It was in the basement room. There was a... I was like a fucking CRT TV. And... Uh... A lot of the older one, uh, Like a lot of the... Older members of the church like of the music team because it was all the music team it wasn't the whole church it was just the music team and they were getting together because that was fun you know we all knew each other it was a you know it was an event pretty much everybody went to their house uh, everybody went to one of the band members houses and we would all have fun because it was a big house and whatever and um The older members of the music team, if uh, the older males, old men would play pool, and all the ladies would chat, and all the younger ones would like either play outside or or just chat to themselves. And I was really young, so I didn't have any stories. All of the other ones, they were all in like middle school or something when I was four, or they were all in high school when I was in middle school and eventually they were all starting to go to college which is you know where they are now they're actually like living lives having children doing things and here I am sitting talking about my life while playing a fuck well not even playing unlocking shit in Sonic Mega Collection but I just find it funny because I was four and I was super bored because this was before I had any sort of entertainment other than like sitting at home playing with toys and I had no toys to bring and I was dragged along to this party and um, what ended up happening was I had uh, I had started to, uh, fuck, I was, a bunch of them, a bunch of the, the older kids were playing, and I call them older kids, they were way older, they were, they were at least eight years, or six to eight years older than me, in fact, the closest one was four years older than me. So, that's not a lot, but it's still a lot. Like, they graduated when I started high school, pretty much. That's how you know that they're, you know, they're older than you, whatever. But they were playing Goldeneye on the N64, and they had the four controllers, and they had all the characters unlocked. Odd job, and of course, there's a whole... You know, no odd job, motherfucker. And, like, I didn't know what to do, and I kept dying, and, like, it was fun. Because it was like, I'd never done this before. This is a game that I've... Ne this is something I've never played. They asked, hey... You know, I, I asked what they were doing, and they were, like, playing a game. And I was like, what kind of game I want to play? And, uh... Sure enough, they were playing Goldeneye on N64, and that was the first... That was the first video game I ever played, but it wasn't on a console I owned because I didn't own any at the time. But eventually I got a PS2, and then I got a DS, and I played Sonic Rush Adventure. In fact, I didn't even get like I didn't get the classic collection or uh, Rush One for a while. I had Mario Bros. and I had Rush Adventure. In fact, I had a whole bunch of different games that I played on the DS Lite. I remember for sure playing uh, playing Mario Bros. But I do remember that my friend Chris had a emulator, like 
It's like one of those weird like adapter things that you plug into your uh, DS, and like you need a micro SD card to play them. And like the idea is that, yeah, you you, you get two. There are two gate. There's a uh, a Game Boy Advance one and a DS one. And the idea is, they're basically like cartridge de-dusters or whatever. But the idea is that, like, you play, you, you turn on your DS and you select your game pack or whatever, and then you get to play uh, either DS games on the DS card or Game Boy Advance games on the Game Boy Advance card. And you could play like Mario, uh, you could play like uh, Mario 3, Mario, Mario 2, 3 in World, and then Yoshi's Island from those Game Boy Advance cards. Because I remember Mario, Super Mario Deluxe was a Game Boy card. But Mario 2 was a Game Boy Advance card or whatever. Basically, you could play any game you wanted as long as you had it on the micro SD card, which were new at the time to me because I had known that there was any form of memory other than like what came in something or like a hard drive. I, I didn't even remember what a hard drive was because I was a kid. But yeah, there was that. I can't remember what the hell they were called. I'm sure I could find one. That'd be hard, though. I, yeah. There's so much that you can't... You have to remember the name. Otherwise, you don't... You know, you don't remember. If you don't remember the name, you don't remember at all. You know, that's, that's kind of the point. And I'm sure all of these things could be remembered if I have more subscribers that would tell me... If they had the same experiences, but the only one that ever actually bothers to talk to me is Austin Chesna. Hi, Austin. I know you're watching this video. Say hi in the comments. Um, at this point, I've probably run out of music to play, so I'll probably end up playing the Sonic 2 soundtrack. So... Or like maybe Rystar or something. Whatever. I don't know. But what I do know is that when I got the Wii, I had a whole bunch of games for that. And then my PS2 broke. But when I was 10, I had my PS2, I had my Wii, and I had my DS. And an iPod that I borrowed from my mom to play Sonic 1 on. Because it's the only way I could play Sonic 1 on the go besides using my DS. But I didn't have the Sonic Classic Collection because I didn't know that existed. So, the only way I could play Sonic 1 was on the iPod. And I was super horrible at it, and I could only get past, um... Ah, sweet, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yeah, the only way I could get past it was by cheating, and I couldn't even cheat, because you can't cheat on Sonic 1 on iPod. It was the iPod Classic, too, so it's like, what? Uh, alright, so now we have Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And you'd think, hey, fucking, now you have it. You can stop now. But I have way more stories to play, and I have one more game to unlock. So, without further ado, fucking, now we gotta play Blue Sphere. Okay, and I've been reading the list of how to unlock these games. Uh, to unlock Rise Star, and this is the fucking worst, you have to play Blue Sphere, Knuckles and Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and Flicky 30 times each. And that's on top of the 20 times each for each game that you use to unlock those. So it's like, okay, and if I hadn't, okay, if I hadn't unlocked this by getting Sonic Adventure 2 on my GameCube memory card, I would have had to play this 30 times. 
So pretty much played this 20 times, 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 and this 30 times. So in total, that is 150 times you would hit the A button and the Z button. Granted, you did it perfectly to unlock f fucking four games. And then you have to press the A button 120 more times to unlock Rystar. And honestly, you're breaking your GameCube controller just doing that. But whatever. We're moving on. Blue Sphere. Uh, anyway, so when I was 10, I would play games on these three consoles, and uh, my PS2 was breaking, and my Wii was perfectly fine, you know, so there's that. And my DS uh, was replaced once already, because for some reason I would drop it, and the screen would start cracking, and eventually the screen totally came off, and I had to get a new DS. And then I got stolen out of DSi, but that's not the point. Uh, basically, the point was that, like, I had all of these different consoles, and I, or, like, I had, I had three different video game systems, and me at, back then. Before I even had a job, because I was 10, that was super, super cool. Because it was like, I have more video game systems than my friends. And my friends had like, just the Wii, or just the DS, or something like that. And that was cool. But, I think it was, you know... Then, then a game shop opened up right um, off of a bridge. It's a gun shop now. No. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, history lesson here. Uh, there was a game shop near, uh, uh, like a front. It was on a frontage road. And what you had to do was you had to go over a bridge and you had to turn right and then turn left and then you were in the parking lot. It was called Video Game Star. It was a secondhand video game shop. And I almost got a game gear from them, but I actually have a game gear now from a different like a book like a bookstore. But basically the idea was that this uh, this secondhand game shop had all the fucking classic games, it had Zelda on the NES, it had uh, you know, they sold consoles and stuff, they sold uh, stuff for Dreamcast, pretty much anything, uh, classic gaming, that's what they had. They didn't have anything, I think, newer than Wii at that point, or anything newer than GameCube at that point, because they were a second-hand game shop, no one wanted to get rid of their Wii stuff because it was new. Uh, but what ended up happening was, uh, when I was 10, I really wanted to get a Sega Genesis, because that's how you played some of these games back then. And I was like, hey, I want to feel like what it, fe I, I want to know what it feels like to play Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on a real Genesis. So I got one. I saved up my allowances and I had 20 bucks and that's how much a Genesis was at the time because no one wanted one. And I got a Model 2 and I still use that one today. It hasn't even broken yet. And if it has, if it, if, for some stupid reason, it it closes one day, or it just or it closes. The book closes on my Genesis, and it dies on me. A Model 2 Genesis isn't much more expensive, and I probably will get a Model 1 anyway, just because you know it's a Model 1. But that's not the point. In fact, maybe I will get a Model 2 again. But, uh, what ended up happening was I, uh, I bought my Model 2 Genesis. When I bought the Genesis, 
I wasn't sure which one they were going to give me because if you just said you wanted a Genesis, they just handed you one, which is really bad because at, w at that point you might have ended up with a Genesis, like a Model 3 Genesis because they sell those there too. And it was like a one in three chance. And like, I knew about the three different models and I was like, I don't know which one they're gonna give you. Uh, and because they had a model one, a model two, and a model three on their shelf uh, with their pricing and whatnot. And I got a model two, so that's cool. I have a model two Genesis, which is always fine. Uh, and then on eBay, there was some sort of buy it now for all four Sonic games. Because I didn't know that Amazon existed, so I bought the four original Sonic games in box with most with the manual. Not all of them had the manual in them. And I can tell because actually I had the original box for Sonic and Knuckles, but the inside of the box died. So all I had was the manual and the, out co the outside cover of the box which eventually I got a game called Football 96 and I sold that one. But what ended up happening was uh, after selling that one, I kept the box and I tore up the box. I lined it with some uh, paper towel and uh, I made padding for the Sonic & Knuckles cartridge. And now I have a makeshift box custom made for Sonic & Knuckles. Which is nice, now it actually looks good on my shelf if I had room for it, uh, but that's not the point. Uh, basically I, I had the original four Sonic games and I bought Spinball and Sega Arcade Classics as well because they were uh, they were a dollar each, so I mean whatever. And I have a decent Genesis collection now, I have Clue, I had Columns as well but I sold that, uh, but I have Clue on Genesis that came in a uh, in a clear case that I don't have anymore because that's how I got rid of columns and then I bought um, I bought at one point Michael J oh yeah we had a mega media exchange too and they had all the classic stuff as well and they closed so now all that's left is the game shop downtown which is where I go to get some of my games, like Michael Jackson's Moonwalker and Comic Zone and all those fun games that I have on my shelf now. Uh, in fact, the only reason I rebought Sonic and the Secret Rings, which I gave to a uh, uh, boys and girls club in my town. So I got Sonic and the Black Knight because that one looked good when I was a kid. looks horrible now, but I'm still going to torture myself by playing it. Uh, and I gave my copy of Sonic and the Secret Rings to uh, uh, my local boys and girls club because of the party mode. Uh, what I found, what I had a problem with though, is that like. I rebought the game and it had all my party mode saves on it, but I probably just want to replay the game over again just because the controls are so hard to use. It's so bad. It's like absolutely the worst thing I've ever had to do. But, uh, yeah, so I went and I bought a Genesis, I got all the classic games, and I played them. And I immediately went back to playing them on the PS2 because they just worked better. And the Genesis controllers that I was given, I got two, which is weird because normally you don't get two Genesis controllers right away. But uh, at, at Video Game Star, they gave you two, which is great. They gave me a fighter pad, which I still use today. It's, it has the six buttons, which is great. I still use the uh, yeah I still use the uh, the what's it I still use the uh, fighter pad to this day because it has worked since I got it uh, I got a regular Genesis controller which was 
was sticky and didn't work. The start button was jammed. So I kept jamming my thumb trying to pause video games, which is hard to do. Uh, so I have that one in hopes that I can get it repaired, but probably not. Um, and then I got a third party one really late. Like I got it like a year ago, a third party controller. And that one I don't use anymore because it's third party. And then I got a first party one again that does work, and that's the one I'm going to use to play Mania. Uh, so, there's that. Uh, yeah, I gotta do... I'm... I, I love how long it's been... Just how long... It, just how far I've come as a person because like I remember back when I was like 10 and I or not 10 back when I was 5 and I was playing it's like Sonic 2 and I would mention that I played Sonic and everyone would be like oh yeah you're playing Sonic the Hedgehog and like you know Shadow the Hedgehog was out but no one's attitude was really like uh, about Sonic and then Sonic 06 came out oh, fuck, it's been 11 years since then right we've made it far as a fucking civilization nope because we released Sonic Boom anyway but I, I own Sonic 06 which is funny because now I can play the game that everybody hates <sighs> so now we're moving on to Snuckles and Sonic 2, which is awesome. Now we can actually... We're, we're a quarter of the way to the end. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically we're like... You know, Sonic 06 came out, and that's also when a lot of people start... You know, and that's also when, like... People started uploading stuff onto, onto YouTube, and like, because yeah, YouTube was new, and people would upload those videos of like, Sonic pictures off of DeviantArt, and they would be like, to the background of his world, and all shit like that, which is always funny. I just think my favorite thing is that, like, I don't really think I started getting into 3D Sonic. Like, I knew Sonic in 3D was a thing. Like, I knew there was 3D Blast, but that was isometric, that wasn't 3D, but I, I didn't get into, th like, real 3D Sonic until, like, Unleashed. And even then, that wasn't real. Like, that wasn't, like, really unleashed. Like, it was real. It was f really for real, but it wasn't, f like, unleashed. It wasn't unleashed on 360, which I didn't own at the time, so why bother, right? In fact, I remember being a kid and having, like, an NES, even. Like, I was really starting to build up my game collection at this point and I remember uh, I remember uh, I remember when Sonic 4 episode 1 was announced and we all know how much of a tr Sonic was like oh my god classic sonic is back like it's it's refreshed but it's back and everybody was freaking out colors was coming out that was that looked good because it was 
it was unleash style gameplay but only the daytime levels and everyone was freaking out because like you know sega's not fucking up anymore they're making actually decent video games you know and you know people and, and that was like People were making like Sega animations. There were a bunch of really good ones for Sonic 4. In fact, yeah, Sonic 4 was so hyped up that animators were making fan animations. And I think my favorite one, like there was one where it was like someone turned on their Genesis and Eggman fucking comes down and laughs at Sonic and then Sonic fucking like kills him or something. I can't remember. But I think one of my favorite fan animations was... It was Sonic... Uh, Sonic was... Basically just traveling through his game. He, he found a future sign... And every single time he hit a future sign, he goes to the, front of the next game chronologically. And I think that artist was the same one that did a, a Eggman blowing up Sonic's wall and then giving him a, a present on his 26th birthday. I think that was the same animator, but I can't remember. Uh, but he, you know, he he basically goes on and he. goes on until colors and then goes back to Sonic 4 episode 1 and I also remember there was the joke about Sonic 3 CD and Knuckles and Knuckles by some call me Johnny during the hype of Sonic 4 but I remember and, and this was during the era of Flipnote Studio too but I remember there was the ever so excellent fan animation of how stupid Sonic's friends are. And it was just like, chirp. What? A crazed evil scientist named Dr. Eggman is going to take over the world, capturing animals and eventually turning into Robotropolis? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Okay, then. And, like, the whole joke is that Eggman was fat and kept getting a heart attack. And, like, all the times, like, Sonic had friends. It was always stupid. And, of course, Sonic had a nightmare. And that's when, like, it was like Sonic the Hedgehog 4, friends not included, or something like that. That was my favorite because it was just, like, you know, Tails and Knuckles are definitely classics because they were in the original games. But, like, after, uh, and, like, Amy was a classic, too, because Amy was introduced in CD, which is, by all technicalities, a classic Sonic game. Uh, but, like, after you get to characters like Big the Cat and Tikal, Gamma, um, fucking Shadow, after you get past some of the characters, uh, you know, Knack from f fucking uh, Triple Trouble, the characters from Tales Adventure, all those fucking characters that no one gives a shit about anymore. It's like, really? Why, why bother, right? I don't know. There is a whole, like, cult following for obscure Sonic characters, like Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. But there's, you know, there's all that. But basically the idea was Sonic 4 was super hyped, uh, and that turned out to be a disaster. And then everyone was like, oh, you gotta do Sonic 4 Episode 2. And 
Sega was like, all right, hold on, but first we're remaking your favorite levels from the original games that you guys played. And then they made Generations for Sonic's 20th. And good lord was Generations good. Like, it was all the daytime Sonic stages from Unleashed for modern Sonic. And all the classic goodness from classic Sonic. Minus a few things for uh, like physics wise. It was still good. It felt it felt more like a classic Sonic game than Sonic 4 did. If you know if we're going by that. Like it wasn't the physics weren't perfect. It's running off of the Unleashed engine. And the Unleashed engine can't run classic physics as well. Although now that they're doing the Hedgehog Engine 2, I feel like they're gonna be working on that a little better. Uh, but I don't know Mania Mania has some promise for its physics which is great but I think one of the greatest things was that when they did eventually release episode 2 the hype was so short lived just because Sonic 4's physics were so bad. I remember I played Sonic 4 on the PC a little bit, and the PC version is so much better, and it's still horrible. I fucking hate Sonic 4 so, so much. Why am I pressing start? I'm not playing that. I'm not going to play Sonic 2 and Knuckles, like, for a while. <sighs> I hate Sonic 4 so much, and the only reason why is Special Stage 7, first off, because fuck that Special Stage, fuck it, uh, but 2, because... Uh, it's horrible. It's just it's, the physics are bad. The levels aren't very well designed. It doesn't feel like a Sonic game. The music is mediocre, and especially mediocre the the the, the first way I played it. There was once a time when Sonic 4 Episode 2 was going to be released on the Wii, and then they canceled it because. Originally, Sonic 4 Episode 1 was released on the Wii, and it is. I have Sonic 4 for the Wii, because I heard it was going to be released for the Wii, and I, I begged my mom, hey, hey, can you get me some Wii points so I can buy this? And she was like, she, do all your homework, and I'll be like, and I was like, alright. So I did all my homework. I got my classes up, and she got me a Wii Points card, and I bought the game, and I think a few others, because I had enough Wii Points, and I remember the first thing I thought was, man, this game is great. I was 11, maybe? Probably? Yeah, I was 11. So, my sense for good games was dampened. I thought Chronicles was, like, the best RPG ever, and I've played Mario RPG and Final Fantasy, and I think I've played a little bit of Xenoblade. I can definitely tell that Sonic Chronicles is one of the worst RPGs I've ever played. It is definitely not one of the greater ones, uh, but that's also because everyone was like, oh, fucking Sonic is trash, and I'm like, but I like Sonic, man. And I'm really glad we're talking. Holy shit, it's cold in here. Uh, it's getting cold now. It's actually like cooling off in the middle of the night. But I want to keep the fan on because at least it's some sort of airflow for one and two. It, you know, this fucking room is silent other than my voice right now. So if I ever go into awkward silence, then I'm gonna feel that awkward silence. Uh, but ah. meantime we're gonna talk about Sonic 4 
Well, I played through Sonic 4 on the Wii. I got all the Chaos Emeralds, which is cool. Not cool, though, that it was actually, like, something I did. In fact, I think, at some point, if I ever do a Sonic 4 Let's Play, I'll show off all of my save files, because they're so dumb. And I know for a fact I'm going to be playing Sonic 4 on the Wii, because I could play it on the PC. But why do that when you can play Sonic 4 on the Wii? Yay! And you could only play Sonic 4 with the Wii Remote. On second thought, I will be playing Sonic 4 on the PC. But I will be showing off the Wii version as a comparison. Uh, yeah, you could only play Sonic 4 with the Wii Remote. And you, uh, and you played it like a, like a NES controller. So you hold it on its side. But the way that you did the special stages was you tilted. And you could choose, and I'm glad this was an option because I know the iOS version and the Android version weren't very forgiving with Sonic 4, but the iOS version of Sonic 4 uh, forced you to tilt, whereas the, uh, the Wii version did not. There was a setting for it, so that's nice. There, it's nice that there was a setting for the Wii version where you didn't have to tilt if you didn't want to, but you had to use the Wii remote. And from what I remember, the way you homing attack was you shook the Wii remote, which is stupid. Why is that a thing that you have to do? You shouldn't have to shake the Wii remote to homing attack. That's what you, didn't, that's what you did in fucking Unleashed. Unleashed was horrible. Unleashed was good. I actually rather liked Unleashed. Unle Wii Unleashed was only bad for two reasons and it was that it was mission based and it was that it was um, and, and that like the classic controller and the GameCube controller were the only possible ways you could ever play that game because I played it with the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck and it was horrible <laughs> I would have to admit though that there were a few things in the Xbox 360 version that I liked a little bit more in the Wii version. And I would have to say experience points are way better in the Wii version than in the Xbox 360 version, as well as Sun and Moon medals. And um, what else? Yeah, there are, three, there are three things that I liked better in the Wii version than the Xbox 360 version. The Wii version did experience better, and it did the Sun and Moon medals a lot better. Uh, but I also think it did... Uh, it did some of the levels a little bit better, too. Like, I think I liked the day levels in Wii better than I liked the day levels in uh, Xbox 360 Unleashed. Though admittedly, there are some really good ones in the Xbox 360 release. Uh, but, I would like to mention that there is one, one thing I like in the Xbox 360 version better than the Wii version. Otherwise, most of it's all the same. I could probably have my own argument in a separate video, but I'm having this argument now because I have the time. Uh, but... In the Xbox 360 version, even though there were more combos to pull off, there you were a lot stronger, I think. And you had the option to choose what you upgraded as opposed to uh, just having it upgrade as you went on. In the Wii version, when you get experience points, you have a wheel, and you only get a certain amount of combo moves. But when you... Uh, you get experience points in the Wii version, and I like them more in the Wii version because, Jesus Christ, they just handle it better. When you get experience points in the Wii version, they go right to you. They are, and, and not only that, but you don't have to, like, specifically, there are more enemies in the Xbox 360 version to handle more uh, experience points being given, but... What, what's nice about the Wii version is that there are hidden capsules in the game that give you experience points for free 
and all you have to do is go a little bit out of your way, fight a few enemies, and then hit the the capsule, and then go on with uh, the rest of the level, and you could probably still get an A, uh, like an S rank, get it, uh, after getting this the capsules because the experience points are part of getting the S rank. In fact, uh, the the more experience points you get in the level, not only do you level up more, but there's actually a specific quota that you need. You need to get there before a certain time. You need to get there. Um, Yeah, you need to get to the end of the level in a certain time. You need to get to the level... You need to get a certain amount of rings, and you also need to get a certain amount of experience points. And experience points are given with capsules, which is a really good way to get experience points because they give you a lot, and uh, fighting enemies. Now, in the Xbox 360 version, there are more enemies, but there aren't any other ways to get experience points other than fighting, so a lot of the time you're going to be grinding, and that's not a lot of fun. Uh, what's nice about the Wii version is that uh, it basically the, the experience comes to you. Sometimes there are, uh, there are times when you're fighting an enemy in a game, and then you get experience from them, but then it disappears because it plays a cutscene, and that's honestly the worst. And I've had that happen more than often. But with the Wii version, if a cutscene plays after you beat an enemy, it doesn't matter because the experience point like gravitate towards you. Even if it's even if you break the uh, the the box and run away, it will still go to you, and it's guaranteed that once you find it or beat an enemy, you get the experience points no matter what, and you don't even have to grab it yet. Like you you just get it, and that's that I think is how well it's handled. Like you get rewarded for exploration. By getting more experience and that is a wonderful way to do experience points but the problem is you don't get to choose what you level up so by when you get a bunch of experience points in the Wii version it just goes onto a meter and the more experience points you get it upgrades them like linearly so you get a health boost and then an unleash meter boost and then a power boost and then everything, like your power is eventually doubled at the end of the game. That's not fun. I'd rather it be like in the Xbox 360 version where you get, uh, where basically you have, uh, different things that you can do. You can, uh, you can level up your unleashed meter, you can level up your health bar, you can level up uh, your combos so you can learn new combos, and then you can level up your power so you hit harder. And that's for the Werehog. But I also like that in uh, Sonic Unleashed for Wii, or in, in for Xbox 360, that if you get experience as a Werehog, can also use it on regular Sonic and vice versa if you get experience in a daytime stage because you can do that unfortunately you only get experience at nighttime in the in the Wii version which is fine it, you know Sonic is already at max speed in the Wii version so it doesn't matter that much holy shit my nose is running <laughs> I really hope I'm not coming down with a cold because I work I well, actually I work at one one day because it's already Thursday it was Thursday when I started this video. It's Thursday now. I didn't expect it to be the, you know, Thursday today. Except, you know, it is Thursday. Whatever. Uh, basically, the idea was that you could. Basically, Sonic was as fast as he was in the beginning of the game, in both versions. The idea is that you, in the in the Wii version, you always have that speed of Sonic forever until you inevitably finish the game. Whereas with the Wii, whereas with the Xbox 360 version, uh, you have. The ability to make Sonic even faster 
but you also have the ability to make the Werehog even more powerful, blah, 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 which is fine. You know, you can choose whether or not you want Sonic to be faster or Werehog to be more powerful. Honestly, I feel like the only thing you want to do with Sonic is you want to really boost up his, uh, his boost meter. Because at the beginning of the game, you have a really short boost meter, whereas your speed is already pretty goddamn fast. I think the only reason you would ever need to boost up your speed is by, uh, for like mission or like timed missions. Uh, I know they like the hot dog missions in uh, the Hub World, which you don't get in the Wii version because they're all missions. The only time attack mission I ever had a problem with in the Wii version was Eggman Land, which there was a good reason for it, but. Good lord, did I fucking have a problem with that mission, because that's actually... When I was a kid, I had Sonic Unleashed for Wii, and I knew there was a fucking Xbox 360 version. Uh, I watched... I don't know if it was Ant Dude, or well, he went as Sonic Dude. I don't know if it was Ant Dude, or if it was some other guy, and Warbot 40. I can't remember who did it with Warbot. But it was them and War. It was hit, this one guy in War about 40, and they did. Um, they did Sonic Unleashed for Wii. Mentioned all the version differences. But I remember in the Wii version. Uh, a lot of things were different. And I grew up with the Wii version, and the moment I made it to Eggman Land. I was like, holy crap, this is the final battle, the final battle, blah, blah, blah. And I made it to the time attack mission in Eggman Land, which was the last one before you had to do all the Werehog shit. Because uh, there were a lot of Werehog levels in Eggman Land. Definitely tell you that much. Uh, holy crap, like seriously, there are five, six levels back to back Werehog in that fucking level. Uh, but it was the last daytime level. I couldn't get past it because I wasn't fast enough and I didn't know how to do shortcuts. And there were a lot of things, there were a lot of problems with it. I had a really short temper as well. I think that was the big one. I had a really short temper as a kid. In fact, there was a, a museum mini game in Sonic in the Olympic Games for DS that was really fucking hard. And I couldn't fucking do it because it was too hard and I would I actually cried. That's how hard it was. Eventually I got it right. Eventually I beat it. And that was a momentous occasion in kid history. But Beyond the point, basically, I couldn't get past Eggman Land as hard as I tried. In fact, that's how I kind of feel with some of the missions in uh, Adventure 1 right now. But that's just, that's because they're unfair. That's because they have horrible controls. It's like getting the special stages and, uh, and heroes. That's just not fun. Like, with some of the shit I did as a kid, like, it was hard. But the reason it was hard was because it was either the final level... Or it's just because I didn't have an ex uh, enough experience and I skipped ahead of the game. With that, I've played the whole game through and I still can't do it. It's like, Jesus, really? Are you kidding me? Wow. Um, but yeah, so... But, yeah, I actually ended up selling my copy of Unleashed for Wii because of that level. Of course, I played it again, no problem. I remember restarting my save file as Jack Black, obviously. I restarted my save file and I used my Jack Black me as a profile picture. And I actually beat the game. Not, I did get all the medals, unfortunately, but... I got a bunch of the upgrades that you couldn't get previously, and I actually did end up, um, I 
I did end up uh, finishing that game, which is great. Because good lord, I loved that game after I finished it. The only problem I think I had with the storyline is uh, Tianchai and Rudy. Because in in the Xbox 360 version, you get uh, you get something. No, in, in in the Xbox 360 version, the townspeople are just there to give you extra missions or sell you items that you need to give you experience points or or or, or something like that. Basically, that's the only reason the townspeople are there. In fact. You get a bunch of cool stuff from the Chai Tea minigame, and you get a bunch of the teas from a bunch of different people, and you give them to this one guy, who in the Wii version is sick. That's his personality, is that he has a cold. Uh, yeah, there's an old man in Shamar, and in the Wii version, he's he has a cold, and he gives you this tablet, and he allows you to go to the, uh, the altar or whatever. But in the uh, Xbox 360 version, he just kind of hangs out, and uh, he asks you if you have any tea, and if you give him the tea, uh, he gives you items, which is always, always fine. And they're really good items, too. It's like, he gives you a bunch of experience, and he gives you also, like, uh, special items that you may or may not have known existed, which are always fine. But I find it really funny because, like, you know, I had all of these, uh, I had all these memories with the Wii version. I forgot about the characters because they were so bland in the Wii version. And of course I played the Xbox 360 version all the way through when I got an Xbox 360. Which is... Actually really cool. But like... I, I played the game all the way through in the Xbox 360 version. And the one thing I remember from the 360 version is that all the characters had... Impeccable personality. Like, every single character that you interacted with in the Xbox 360 version had some sort of personality. The fat Asian kid it was still the fat Asian kid. Uh, but what I, what I especially like is that the village elder has no role other than he was missing. In, in Chunan, anyway. The Chunan village elder had zero purpose in the Wii version other than he was gone and then you needed to save him and then everybody was thankful. But in the, in the Xbox 360 version, he had a role in reviving the Gaia Phoenix and he had a really big role in trying to help uh, Werehog Sonic. There's a part where if you go back there, I think after you beat the game, uh, the village elder is like, why are you still a Werehog? Uh, the spirits must be inside you or something. And then he basically just like gives you ancient remedies to try to get the Werehog out of you and none of them work. But he's really funny. Although one of the, one of my favorite moments in uh, in uh, in Unleashed for Wii and Unleashed for Xbox 360, I just hate the fact that in the Wii version they don't give Tian Chai or uh, Rudy any personality because there are a lot of characters that have just the most wonderful personalities that in the Xbox 360 version that are given zero in the fucking. Wii version because of either story plot lines or just that like or, or, or just that like they were changed or 
something, but like my favorite thing in uh, in Sonic Unleashed for the Xbox 360 was going to Adabat, talking to Tian Chai, and he would basically say like, "Hey, what's up, Sonic? Hope you have a good stay." And then he'd talk to his daughter Rudy, and Rudy would be like flirting with you, right? And like you could tell, okay, Tian Chai is a dad. He has two sons and a daughter. He, you know, he makes sure his two sons are hardworking. And he makes sure no one fucking flirts with his daughter. His daughter's a flirty one, though. So his, technically, his daughter is flirting, flirting with you. And so you'll talk to him, and Tian Chai is always like, "Hey, Sonic, what's up? Blah blah blah. Enjoy your stay. Blah blah blah." And then you go to talk to his daughter Rudy, and he's like, and and, and Rudy is like, "Oh, hey, Sonic, or hey, hey, hot stuff, or something like that." Hope you uh, hope you do well saving the planet, blah, blah, blah. And then if you immediately talk to Tian Chai after talking to Rudy, Tian Chai is absolutely livid that you were talking to Rudy. And he basically tells you to get away from his daughter. And it's so comical because they give him the greatest expressions during that whole interaction. And, like, it really gives the character's personality. Like, if you talk to the dad... And you haven't talked to his daughter. He's cool with you. But the moment you talk to his daughter, he hates you. And that is the most wonderful thing I've ever seen in a video game. And in... And then that, that's not required either. Like, you don't... You're not required to do that. But that's a little, uh, like, tidbit that's actually interesting. But in the Wii version... The moment you get to Adabat, they basically say, oh, the village was destroyed. And, like, in the Xbox 360 version, that was the plot line, too. The, most of the village was destroyed, but everybody was pushing on because, you know, they needed to save the world, right? Now, in Adabat, everybody was like, yes, our village was destroyed, but we need to push forward because, you know, it could have been a whole lot worse. But in the Wii version, Tian Chai is completely like depressed and when you talk to Tian Chai he's like oh life sucks and then you go talk to Rudy thinking oh if I talk to Rudy Tian Chai will be mad and I talk to Rudy and Rudy is like hey could you go check on Tian Chai he really needs to give you something or, or like if you mention that you're going to save the world I'm sure he'll be happy and then you go to talk to Tian Chai, and he's like, oh, you're talking to Rudy? She has some for you. And you go talk to Rudy, and then, like, Rudy gives you, uh, a fucking, like, stone that you need to finish the game. And then Rudy's like, thanks for talking to my dad. And then if you talk to them after you beat the game, they're exactly the fucking same. It's like... They have zero personality, other than just, like, Oh, we're people. But the two boys are this. Like, the two boys, in fact, I think have the same lines. Actually, no, okay. The the younger boy has. Uh, the younger boy has the same lines, but the older boy. Uh, the older. Like, the older brother basically says, like, oh, hey, we don't see a lot of people like you here. Uh, in the he says that in both versions but in the Wii version he says yeah dad's been pretty bummed since our village got like destroyed in an earthquake or something but in the Xbox 360 version it's like yeah dad's our elder uh, don't talk to our daughter though or else you might get mad and like that's that's the greatest thing it's like hey they gave him personality they actually gave a shit but like I think the greatest thing is that like and this is a really cool this is a really, like, interesting thing because you think it's, like, a, you know, it would have been really easy to be an oversight. But, like, in the Xbox 360 versions, there are all the characters that you talk with. But then there are a bunch of, like, garbage characters that you don't even see or don't have any personality other than they're just in the towns. There are, in, in, in the Xbox 360 version... On occasion, you'll hear, like, background noises in the tub world of, like, people doing things, like taking showers, singing, 
you know, stuff like that. But you'll actually see people walking around that you can't interact with, or like they'll do something, but you can't interact with them because they're garbage characters, right? So it's like, hey, that's kind of cool. These characters are all like, yeah, they're all garbage characters, but at least they have a personality, right? It's cool. I dig it. I, I really, I really dig it. Although, <laughs> I just find it interesting that like in the hub worlds in the Wii version, they're all the generic characters, you know. You always meet like Alexis and all the characters from Apatos and Apatos, blah blah blah. Gregorios, Eric. You know, you always you, you don't meet any characters that are unimportant to the story in the Wii version. But it's a it's 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 a it's a menu style hub world. It's like that's the lowest you could go and there's no personality other than, hey, this is a town. And there are people in it, but none of them are important, because why should we care? But like, I just find it funny because there are all these different characters. And I have to go back to these because I'm pretty sure I missed a few plays for this one, especially. Um, but like, in Apatos and in every other country in the game, except for Eggman Land. But Eggman Land has its own NPCs that are really kind of funny because, you know, it's Eggman Land. And when you do end up going to Eggman Land in the Wii version, there is no extra hub world when you beat the game. But when you beat the game, you can't actually go to Eggman Land, and there is a hub world. And I do think it's absolutely hilarious that when you go to Eggman Land, there are actual NPCs that you can talk to, but they're just uh, egg bots that don't want to actually kill you because they're having too much fun in Eggman Land. Uh, but I actually find it very very cool that there are different um, different NPCs that you can uh, see but not interact with in the Xbox 360 version just because it gives more of a livelihood to these towns other than hey there's a town and there's people in them you know I find that really nice because it's like hey more than just the characters that you need to talk to live in this town. There's not just an old man, a lady, a professor, an assistant, and a pink hedgehog in this town. There are actually like little kids that like playing with trucks and shit. And they're at the cafe. There's a couple that look like they're going to kiss. And it's, 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 you know, there are more than just turban people in, in Shamar. There are people without turbans that are touristing and I think the coolest addition was Empire City and the extra levels in Missouri because Empire City was like hey this is America it's not just like Japan and uh, it, it, it's not just these level uh, it's it's not just these other foreign countries America's in there too and I do find it nice that America is next to uh, the Middle East, which is Shamar, which is definitely a very interesting um, thought, but it's like, hey, these people are super nice, super kind people, and they all live together. And like, what's really cool is there's a part where uh, someone from Shamar is talking online with someone from Empire City, and they actually do end up meeting uh, and one of them leaves to go to Empire, or like, and there's also like a guy 
there, there's a, a, a girl that wants to be on a TV show in Empire City. Uh, and there's also a, a boy in Shamar that runs away to Empire City, which is only a few miles away. And this boy runs to Empire City, and then you have to go find him. And after you find him, you bring him back. And basically, you have to get both this boy from Shamar and this girl from Empire City a record deal with some guy that you find on top of a skyscraper in a mission. Like, you'll talk with this one girl, and this one girl will be like, hey, there's this radio show that, like, you can you can go and... And uh, when you when you turn into this radio show, you get to have a record deal, and then the guy will visit the town, and you can talk with him and shit, and like you. But like this guy's gone missing, and you have to find him. And it's like, yeah, you know, oh, you got to find this guy because he's missing. But you know, you got to. You gotta find him and bring him back. And what's what's really stupid about that is that like you play okay, you play as the Werehog to find him for one. That's always the first mis mistake number one. You fucking have to play as Werehog to find him. But he's on some random building in a level that you've already played. So you play halfway through this level, and then you say, "Hey, is that guy on that building?" Turns out that's the guy that does the record deals, and that's exactly the person that you need to find and it's like what what do you mean a guy like a famous musician that runs a radio show who's willing to give someone a record deal is <laughs> standing on top of it and like there aren't any doors to get down on the second floors either it's just a tiny ass skyscraper he's just standing on top of it he's as wide as the fucking building itself like jesus Look, I'm, I know I'm relatively large, but Jesus, that moment when you're as wide as a fucking, like this, you know, it's three windowsills wide and like 70 stories tall. It's like, you, you're like the scarescraper from Luigi's Mansion, like it, pretty much a futon and a half's length and width. Like, that's how wide this guy is. It's ridiculous. God. Can I unlock Rystar yet? It's 3.37 and I want to go to bed. Like, this is the shit I plan to do at night, but I didn't plan to do it at 1. I plan to do it, like... I planned to do it at like 11.30, but then I was playing Sonic Adventure and I was like, man, Sonic Adventure is fun. And I did all the Sonic missions, which is great. I started doing the Tails missions and then I was like, alright, these are getting kind of annoying. Some of them were super easy and then I got to the one where you're supposed to get the flags uh, in Ice Cap Zone and then I was like, Oh, well, that's kind of unfair, because what if you don't know where the flags are, and, like, the controls are horrible, so what if you don't get them all? And they're in a stupid, they're all in stupid locations and shit, and, like, you know, I was like, well, what if, you know, what if I don't want to? It was just fucking, like, why bother, man? I stopped. I'm just gonna fucking buy a GameCube. Game Shark and get all the emblems that way. I just realized, like, putting putting into perspective, just like, just this, putting into perspective when I started this video and how long this took. Like, it's almost 4 a.m. I should probably be in bed by now. But, like... Like, if you think about it... Why... 
why... If I hadn't gotten Sonic Adventure 2, because I was going to get Sonic Adventure 1 because I knew it had the Game Gear titles, Mega Collection because uh, I knew it existed and I wanted to play it on the GameCube, and Shadow the Hedgehog because Game Grumps played it once. I don't know what my debate was for Adventure 2. But I do know that I, w I eventually planned on getting it because of uh, Green Hill Zone. But... I find it stupid because it's like... If I hadn't bought Sonic Adventure 2 and I made this video without getting a Sonic Adventure 2 save on my memory card, and I actually fucking did... Uh, and I did Mean Mean Machine like 30 times that would have been absolutely the worst it's like dude that is 30 fucking times that I would have had to, uh, pl uh, play that one. And honestly, that's 30 times I don't want to have to deal with. Because I think it took at least 10 minutes just to do the 30 times for for unlocking Rystar, and I haven't even done it yet because apparently it's not unlocked yet. And, and all of them say that you have to, uh, you have to get, you have to play them 30 times each. I don't think it's 50, because 50 would be fucking stupid. I swear I did it 30 times. In fact, I counted. I would assume I missed a few. But, like, not this much, because I've been playing them over and over and over again. I can turn Do Not Disturb off now. In fact, the only reason I turned it off was to turn off the fucking vibrate when I answered a message. Blue Sphere. And I was gonna play around at Blue Sphere. In fact, I was intending this video would be done like fucking 15 minutes ago, so I could play a little bit of Blue Sphere just to talk a little bit more. But now I thought I would have unlocked this and I ran out of stuff to talk about, so now I'm just talking about how I want this to be over. Like, I love Sonic the Hedgehog as much as the next guy, but I would actually like to fucking play it, maybe? I'm glad Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is unlocked from the start, because my friend Andrew fucking got this game, and uh, he, he got it for game... Well, he has a Wii, so he plays it on his Wii. Um, but, like, I don't know if he's unlocked all the games on this yet. I probably don't think he did. He has a GameCube memory card, though.
so I'm sure he has probably gotten it. As, as for Rystar, I don't know. I don't know if he got Rystar right now, but like, I'm sure... I'm sure he got flicky because god damn it he plays mean beat machine all the fucking time. And I'm sure he has Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Knuckles, and uh well Knuckles in Sonic 2, Sonic 3 Knuckles, and uh Blue Sphere by now. If not, I'm honestly surprised because like really? You don't have those? I can understand not getting Knuckles in Sonic 2 because honestly, Knuckles in Sonic 2 is really easy up until the final boss and the only reason I say that is because the final boss is stupid hard as Knuckles. Because like, you make it all the way through this piss easy game because you have Knuckles and then the moment you get to the Death Egg Robot, you are up for a super challenge because you cannot jump as high and you cannot grab onto the walls and hit him from above. So, pretty much that means that you are screwed. You can only... Like, you're wasting time. So you have to fucking super beat uh, Silver Sonic. It's stupid. But, like... Whatever. My cat's is running around the house. It's fucking 4 a.m. Jesus Christ. I don't normally go to bed until like I normally go to bed at three because four is a little too late for me, a little too much because like you know, eventually I'll be up until like six and then I'll go to bed and then I'll wake up at like three a.m. or three p.m. and go about my day because of fucking school and whatnot and I'm more of a night owl so college will be easy because then I can actually take night classes and uh, live my life at night but uh, that's kind of hard to do now because eventually I'm going to have to uh, eventually I'm going to have to work uh, eventually I'm going to have to go back to school and I'm going to have to go back to waking up at 6 a.m. and then going to bed at 9. I have to get z -Quil. I never use z because I'm so good at, like, it, I'm good at going to sleep if I don't have a schedule. If I don't have a schedule, my schedule is I go to bed at fucking like 6 or 5 or whatever and I wake up at, in the afternoon. Uh, but in during the school year I actually need to fucking buy Zequil and I need to buy Zequil during the school year because I cannot go to bed for the life of me at 10 because I'm that's when I'm awake oh my god finally so now we have all the games. So. And I, I really hope you enjoyed me playing all these because like. Oh my god. To put into perspective, I started this at like, I think one, one o'clock pretty much. Maybe 1.30, who knows. Let me check the amount of video in this. Two and a half hours. So yes, I started at roughly 1.15, maybe. And then, um... 1.15 is when I started. I don't even think I turned on the GameCube until 1.20. And then I showed off a bunch of shit. So I probably didn't actually start unlocking games until 1.30. It's almost four o'clock, so it took me almost fucking two hours to unlock all these games. And like, I'm cool if it's like, hey, it takes you two hours to unlock a bunch of games because you gotta play through one of them to get all the games. But it's like, yeah, that that's cool and all, but like, 
I didn't even play all of them. Like, it took me two hours to hit the A and the Z button a whole bunch of times just to unlock all these games. Like, y you know, the idea is that it's supposed to take you like a month or two to get all these games because you played all the other ones a bunch just because they were fun. But, like, I want to play Sonic 3 and Knuckles because that's the way you are supposed to play Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. In fact, the fucking selling point on Sonic and Knuckles collection is that it's three games in one, but they're actually the same game. <laughs> Sonic and Knuckles collection is literally just Sonic 3 alone, Sonic and Knuckles alone, and then Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And it, it, technically, it's, it is technically three games in one, but it's actually two because you got the two in one. It's, it's, just, it's actually just one big game, but you took two of them apart. Of course, it's a shitty MIDI music that ruins it for me. If you're already getting my Sonic 3 Knuckles review, yeah, it's fucking Core 2 Duo Processor. All right. It is 4 a.m. I am very tired, and I'm probably getting sick. So, I guess I'll see you guys in another video. It's going to take forever to fucking process and edit this one. So, I'll see you later, I guess.